Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, the King's Men, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Ma, he's making eyes at me. kid with his little nose pressed against the window of a candy store? Well, Fibber's no kid, and 79 Wistful Vista's no candy store. But otherwise, that's about how he's been acting the last couple of days. And here, taking one more peek out the window, as his wife looks on in bewilderment, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. I wonder what's delaying that mailman. McGee? You speaking to me, Ma? I am that. Now tell me, why have you got your eyes glued on that mailbox? <laughs> Heavenly day, Jack, like a barefoot boy waiting for the sprinkling wagon. <laughs> I'm expecting something. Well, why? I'm sorry, Molly, I can't tell you. This is going to be a surprise. This is something big. Oh, it is? You betcha. You better mark this date on your calendar, Molly. As Mrs. Roosevelt says when she hands her column to the printer, this is my day. <laughs> Ah, McGee, stop this foolishness now. Oh, boy, oh, boy, here it is. That must be the mailman. Hi, mailman, have you got a package for... Oh, excuse me, girls. Oh, that's all right. Uh, can you use my sister and me in your new Johnson Wax program? Well, I'm sorry, girls. I'm afraid not. We'll be glad to take your names in case we have an opening later. Oh, thank you. My name is Charity, and this is my sister, Faith. Oh, where's Hope? Pepsi and got him. <laughs> got him. Dad Bradder, I wonder what's holding up that mailman. Well, when I see the loads of mail the poor lads have to carry, I wonder what holds any of them up. <laughs> Why don't you call up the post office? Oh, no use. They've taken the phones out temporarily. Politics. Politics? Yep. Seems every time they got a ring, somebody threw a hat into it. Oh. <laughs> wow. Am I hot tonight? <laughs> hey, where is that mailman anyway? Well, have you tried looking in the mailbox? Maybe he came while we were having breakfast, dear. Say, I never thought of that. What's the matter with me, anyway? Well, shall I tell you at random or alphabetically? <laughs> oh, I look in the mailbox. Hey, Molly, I got it. It's here. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, what is it? What is it? You see this little box, Molly? Yes. This contains the key to all our future prosperity. Ah, oh, here it is. Oh, look, Molly. What is it? Look. A genuine Egyptian good luck ring. Oh. And only 39 cents postpaid. <laughs> See? It's got the head of the mystical sacred sphinx. It certainly does. <laughs> hey, listen to this, Molly. From the moment you put on this ring, you will be guarded by the spirit of Amu Hotep. Oh, my. To make it cast its spell, merely rub it three times, saying to yourself, meanwhile, Zwiggle, zwoggle, zwoggle. 
Where? Heavenly days. Kid stuff. Oh, yeah, you wait. From the minute I slip this ring on my finger, Molly, I get nothing but good luck. There it goes. Ah, it's tight. There. Now, let me see. Oh, yeah. Zwiggle, zwoggle, zwoogle. Now you'll find out whether... Let Mr. Morgan thaw in, Molly. <laughs> Tell him I won't take a federal job for less than 25000 and a red leather chair. If I had your confidence, I'd take a phone slug and parlay it into a thousand shares of AT&T. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Molly. Say, Fibber, uh, you left your car at the garage to have the oil changed, didn't you? Yes, I did, Harlow. Now, don't tell me they found that my crankcase is made of solid gold. No, they told me your transmission is all shot. Oh. The frame is cracked, the cylinder walls are scored, and you need a new engine block. I was going by and I thought I'd tell you. Sorry, pal. <laughs> well, uh, Moo, how about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. I only just put the ring on this minute. To get... Ah, now it starts. Give me that phone. It's Fair McGee speaking. What? Oh, hello there. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I... I think he's all right. Oh, but look, sir. Ain't you satisfied? Uh, hello? Hello? We was cut off. Who was it, McGee? Our sponsor. <laughs> Wanted to know what I thought of Eddie Cantor. Oh. I wonder... Hey, Molly, let me see our Johnson Wax contract a minute. I don't know where it is, dearie. You were looking at it last night. Well, it's on that table with the rest of them papers. Oh, heavenly days. I thought those were all old newspapers, and I started the fire in the furnace with them this morning. What? You threw out our contract? Oh, for the love. Hmm. You answered, McGee. I'm afraid it's Boris Karloff with a valentine. <laughs> well, I ain't. I got confidence in this ring. I'll answer it. Zwiggle, zwoggle, zwoggle. Uh, special delivery for Fibber McGee. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Here's a nickel for you, bud. A nickel? Yep. Gee, I've seen everything now. <laughs> ah, special delivery, Molly. Hmm. No doubt it's from Egypt, inviting us to the opening of a tomb. <laughs> yeah, well, you can stop your scoffing right now. Look at this. This is from Corpus and Habeas, the lawyers. Oh, so now we're being sued for something. Molly, some, sometimes you're more suspicious than a kid with a detective badge. And we ain't being sued. Listen to this. Dear Mr. McGee, as the administrators of the estate of your late uncle, Spud McGee, of Pocatello, Idaho, we wish to inform you that you are the sole beneficiary to his estate of 10,000 acres. Oh. Wow. Please stop in our office in the lawyer's trust building at once so we may turn over your inheritance to you. What did I tell you, Molly? We're rich. Get your hat. Oh, hold together. it now. Hold it, McGee. Huh? Maybe this is somebody's idea of a joke. Oh. I never heard of your Uncle Spud McGee in Pocatello, Idaho. Oh, sure you did, Molly. Uncle Spud was the one that made a fortune in Idaho potatoes. Potatoes? Yes. He made a great discovery. What was that? One day he took a potato, peeled it, sliced it real thin, and fried the slices in deep fat. Yes. And from that moment on, Uncle Spud was in the chips. <laughs> go on, Molly, let's go. Play, Billy, and thank you, Amu Hotep. <laughs> For Fibber and Molly to return, I'd like your attention for just a minute. If you own stock in a good company, you have the pleasant satisfaction now and then of getting a dividend. But did you ever hear of a dividend for the customer? A consumer dividend? Well, right now, you get a consumer dividend when you buy Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and Johnson's paste or liquid wax. On most dealers' counters, you will find extra-large packages of these famous products containing one-third more than the regular sizes. You pay only the regular price. The extra one-third, your consumer dividend, is made possible by your steadily increasing purchases of Johnson's Glow Coat and Johnson's Wax. This offer is good for a limited time only for all important sizes, pints, pounds, quarts, gallons, and so forth. But when your dealer's stocks are gone, there won't be any more. So see your dealer tomorrow 
and get Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and Johnson's paste and liquid wax in the extra-large containers that give you one-third extra free. office is right in this block. I told you this good luck ring would do the trick. Yeah, let's do the trick, all right. Betcha. So far, your car's a mess. Your contract's burnt up. You just got your foot caught in a streetcar track and then tore your coat on a signboard. You, I don't know. McGee. McGee, where are you? Right down here in this manhole. <laughs> here, let me help you out. For goodness <sighs> sake. <sighs> Hurry, here comes Mrs. Uppington. Huh? Who? Where? Driving down the street in her electric town car. Oh. Look at her in that portable showcase. Yes. Old hen under glass. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mrs. McGee. Hi, Uppy. I'm just on my way to the concert rehearsal. Oh, by the way, how are you and Billy Mills coming along with your concert, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, we have a marvelous program laid out. Oh. Yes, for our first concert, the maestro and I plan to present the works of Debussy. Oh, oh Debussy. <laughs> well, he's got a nice little outfit. I heard him play Jump and Jive on the radio the other night, and he was hotter than a mail-order magic lantern. <laughs> oh, Oh, I'm afraid you misunderstood. Debussy has been dead for 20 years. He has? Well, shucks, you'd never know it to hear him play. <laughs> Have you and Mr. Mills only got one concert laid out, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, no, my dear. Two. The second one will be devoted entirely to the works of Johann Strauss. Strauss? Yes, Strauss. Oh, surely you know Strauss. Strauss. Yes, the man who made the waltz famous. Oh, yes, Strauss. <laughs> Strauss, please. Yeah, Strauss. <laughs> yeah, Strauss. <laughs> well, really. Well, I might have known, may of all the ignorance, if Strauss were alive, I'm sure he'd turn over in his grave. Goodbye. <laughs> Strauss, the guy that made the waltz famous. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows that the waltz was invented by Wayne King. Ah, <laughs> oh, shucks. Well, why should we tell her? Let her find out for herself. Oh, here we are, Molly, the lawyer's trust building. Well, let's go in. Wait till I rub my ring. Zwiggles, woggles, woogles. Look out for that truck, McGee. Whoa. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Muddy water all over your clothes. Oh, well, that. You and your ring. Hmm. I wouldn't mind it half so much, but that truck was from the careful cleaners. <laughs> McGee, the things that happen to you shouldn't happen to your worst enemy. And that's you, too. Okay, okay, let's hurry. This whole trip has been nothing but dilly-dally. Well, I don't know about the dally, but it's certainly been a dilly. <laughs> Come on, here's an elevator. Oh, okay, okay, I'm coming. Going up, going up. Oh, hello there, Johnny. Hello, daughter. What floor do you want? Oh, take us up to the office of habeas and corpus, old-timer. Okay, fasten your safety belts. Here we go. <laughs> Second floor, breaches, speeches, and legal leeches. Third floor, writs, torts, non-supports, and contempt of courts. Fourth floor, bills, wills, codicils, and divorce mills. Fifth floor, blaming, framing, defaming, and counterclaiming. Sixth floor, matrimony, something phony, testimony, and alimony. <laughs> Seventh floor, all out for corpus and habeas. <laughs> well, so long, kids. I gotta go take my flying lesson now. <laughs> Flying lessons. You know, I sort of admire that old man for trying to keep up with things. Go on. He's lucky if he can keep up with the payments on his last set of teeth. <laughs> and speaking of luck, Molly, let's get into well, that Well, hello there, Molly. Hello, Fibber. How's everything? Oh, wonderful, Mr. Wilcox. McGee has just come into a fortune. A fortune? Yep. Yeah. My Uncle Spud McGee remembered me in his will, Harlow. And it's all due to this good uh, luck ring that I'm wearing. See? 
It's Egyptian. <laughs> Maybe Mr. Wilcox isn't interested in these good luck charms, dearie. Oh, but I am. For instance, millions of people believe they can ward off the evil spirits of dirt and wear from their linoleum floors by using Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. And they're right. Zwiggle, zwoggle, zwoggle. McGee, what are you doing? Rubbing and buffing my ring. <laughs> ah, but Johnson's glow coat requires no rubbing or buffing. Saves you time and money on cleaning bills and housework and gives you more time to enjoy the good things in life. Well, but I'd rather have my good luck charm. But Johnson's glow coat works like a charm. Ask any housewife. <laughs> you see the way I let him into that folk? <laughs> Say, uh, Fibber, do you smoke a pipe? Huh? Why, yeah, I was smoking my pipe just a few minutes ago. I thought so. Your coat pocket is on fire. Well, so long, folks. Good luck. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, good old Harpo. <laughs> hey, what do you say about my coat? Uh, hey, oh, uh, help! I'm on fire! Well, slap yourself, McGee. Slap, slap yourself. yourself. <laughs> Where? Where? Oh. There, hey, now. Is it out? Oh, <laughs> That's it. You wow. and your Egyptian rings. Baloney. Oh, well, shucks. As the archaeologist says when he read the name on the mummy he just dug up, oh, tut. <laughs> now, come on, here's the lawyer's office. Oh, just a second. Zwiggle, zwoggle, zwoggle. Okay, let's go. Hey, sis. Yes? Uh, we would like to see Mr. Corpus or Mr. Habeas. I'm sorry, but Mr. Corpus and Mr. Habeas are in court right now fighting our case. A big damage suit. <laughs> Which side are they on, sis? Complainant or defendant? Both. Mr. Harpus complains and Mr. Habeas defends. It keeps the business in the office. Ah, there, Miss Goldfarb. Good afternoon, Mr. Corpus. Uh, pardon me, bud. My name's Fibber McGee. I came in to collect my inheritance. Ah, yes, that case of Fibber McGee. Uh, where is it, Miss Goldfarb? I'm sorry, Mr. Corpus, but you drank the last bottle for New Year's. No, no, I'm talking... Uh... I'm talking about the wills, not the willies. Um, hand it here. Let me see. Oh, yes, yes. Your uncle left a mighty valuable estate, McGee. Oh, boy. You hear that, Molly? A mighty valuable estate. Now, what do you think of this good luck ring? Uh, what I... were you about to say, Mr. Corpus? Well, as I was going to say, the estate has been subject to the usual costs. Oh, of course, of course. There was the federal inheritance tax, the state inheritance tax, various probate fees, legal retainers, and administrative charges, not to mention... Oh, oh sure, of course. I understand. As a matter of fact, your uncle left no cash. What? And uh, for a short while, we considered selling the farm to provide the necessary money. Oh, you considered that for a short while? Yes, just for a short while. Oh, well, uh, that's a relief. I see. Yes, uh, then we went ahead and sold it. What? <laughs> you sold it? Yes. And now for the residue. Oh, th th there is a residue, eh? Oh, of course. Here you are, Mr. McGee. This package is yours. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, what's in it? The things your Uncle Spud McGee lived the best. Oh, the things he loved the best. Good old Uncle Spud. Well, what is it, bud? Six beautiful Idaho potatoes. Oh, sure. Oh. <laughs> Our new vocal feature, the King's Men, now sing The Lamp is Low.
to take off that Hindu uh, hoodoo? <laughs> it ain't Hindu, Molly. It's an Egyptian lucky ring. It's an Egyptian eyesore. Will you please get rid of it, dearie? Oh, well, I'm trying to get rid of it, Molly, but I can't get it off my finger. Uh-huh. It's stuck. Another blessing from Amu Hotel. Why don't you just give it the good old wiggles, woggles, woogle, and rub it off? <laughs> well, I would if I thought... Oh, hello there, little girl. Hi, mister. What's you twisting around your finger, hmm? Oh, just a ring. By the way, sis, I- I'd like to give you this ring. Oh, Mr. McGee, this is so sudden. <laughs> well, I suppose... Huh? Thanks, just the same. I can't take it, but I'll always be a sister to you, mister. <laughs> oh, you got me wrong, sis. This is a lucky ring. How'd you like to have it? Why? Well, because it's lucky, that's why. Can't either, I bet you. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it ain't. Oh, yes, it is. If the other manifestation of medieval superstition have been successful, either in improving the status quo of an individual or protecting him from the dire consequences of his own folly. <laughs> that again? Well, coming down to your level, <laughs> a lucky ring is a lot of malarkey. <laughs> well, so long, mister. I'll see you in the middle of next week. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> now, come on, McGee. Let's hurry home. Well. It's so cold, this fox fur of mine is crawling under my coat. <laughs> Oh, uh, hello there, Fizzer. Hello, Cupid. Oh, hello, Mr. DePopolis. Oh, how are you, Nick? I don't know. I'm not myself today, and I don't speak to strangers. <laughs> oh, how do you feel? Down at the mouth? Oh, I feel good down at the mouth, but terrible up between the ears. <laughs> Say, I know what you should have, Nick. Something to ward off all your troubles. Like an Egyptian good luck ring. Oh, I'm being very well to know that, Fizzer. As a matter of fact, I'm hearing a story about the same thing on the radio last Friday night. Is that so? They were calling it by the name of which the title was being, uh-huh. Joe Lewis and the Lucky Ring. <laughs> I'll tell you about it. Oh, we know all about that, Nick. We're well, not... sir, once upon a time signal, there was a boy living in Chile, South America. His name was called Arturo Godoy, and he was in the gloves business. Uh-huh. One day, they are sending him to New York to exchange a pair of gloves at Madison Square, which is a garden where cauliflowers is being raised. (laughs) And there he's finding a lucky ring which is belonging to a nice Joe named Louis. This Louis is inviting Arturo to come in the ring with him and play bingo. (laughs) But after a little while, the boy from Chile is jumping up and down and kissing Joe Louis goodnight in a South American way. (laughs) So Lewis is asking himself, is this guy drowsy? (laughs) And then Lewis, who is a good kid, closes Arturo's eyes, but he can't put him to sleep. (laughs) So pretty soon it is all over, and Arturo is talking in a microphone, and he says, Buenas noches, amigos, este mi bele, and dies and dach metale celeste for opolarnesis, Adam (laughs) Hatz. The moral to the story is being, beware of people who say they are giving you a ring sometime. <laughs> well, so long, Fizzle, so long, Cupid. <laughs> you see, dearie, you can't even give away your jinx jewelry. Oh, well, let's not worry about it. We're home now. Hey, maybe I can pawn it off on Gildersleeve. Well, it's worth trying. Sure. Hey, Gildersleeve. Oh, Gildy. Uh, what is it, McGee? <laughs> Come on out. 
Come on out. I got something I want to show you. Oh, there, Mrs. McGee. What have you got for me? Nothing but a genuine good luck Egyptian ring. It used to belong to Amu Hotep, the goddess of misfortune. Say, that's a humdinger. How does it work? <laughs> Simple. <laughs> you just rub it three times and say, Zwiggles, Woggles, Woogle. Is Wiggles, Woggles, Woogle. Yeah, you got it already. <laughs> <laughs> say, that, that's very interesting. Well, well what'll you give me for it, Gildy? I'll trade you my jackknife for it. Let's we'll see now. Here, it's a good one, too. Oh, yeah, there's a blade busted. Well, what do you care, dear? I'll tell you what, Gildy. Throw in a quarter and it's a deal. I'll give you a dime. Make it 15 cents. You're a hard man, McGee. <laughs> you drive a hard bargain. But okay. 15 cents and my jackknife. Yep. Come on, give me the ring. All right. Help me get it off, Gildy. Okay. <laughs> ah, there you are. Uh, thanks. Gee, I can hardly wait to get it on, McGee. <laughs> Let's see, now I'll rub it three times and say, Zwiggle, Zwoggle, Zwoogle. Hey, 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 where's the 15 cents? Oh, yes, yes, here's a quarter, McGee. Hey, you got a dime change? Sure, here you are. Say, this is quite an old dime. Say, I'm a bit of a coin collector, you know. Huh? It's an 1894 dime. Well, I'll be. Well, what is it, Gildy? It's an 1894 S dime. Minted in San Francisco. Oh, is that considered good? Good? There are only four others in existence. Huh? Why, this dime is worth $1,750, McGee. Oh. $1,750. Oh, McGee. Oh, my God. Oh, this is marvelous. <laughs> it's colossal. And all because of my Egyptian good luck ring. Gong, gong. Imagine. $1,750. Oh. <laughs> Why, now I'll be able to move to a respectable neighborhood. <laughs> folks. Come on in the house, dearie. Oh, all of that. You see, Molly, I told you that ring was lucky. You shouldn't have made me take it off. Oh, I know, but maybe you were rubbing it the wrong way. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I bet I was wearing it on the wrong finger. Well, how do you know which finger is the right one? Hey, I know what I'll do. I'll wear one on every finger. Give me that phone. Hello, operator. Give me long distance. Who are you calling, dear? Hello, long distance. I want to get the Egyptian Lucky Ring Company. Yes, in Weehawken, New Jersey. What are you going to do, McGee? I'm going to order 20 of them rings. Oh, but McGee, you've only got ten fingers. Well, I got toes, ain't I? <laughs> If I may have your attention for just a moment, I'd like to remind you to write down on your shopping list for this week, Genuine Johnson's Wax. This double-purpose pure wax polish comes in both liquid and paste form. In either form, it does the double job of protecting and beautifying your floors, furniture, and woodwork. Most housewives know that when you walk on wax, you save your floors. And this is true because you are actually walking on the tough, transparent shield of Johnson's Wax, and not on the floor surface itself. From time to time, this wax shield is renewed and your floor is permanently protected. What's more, its beauty increases with each application. Haven't you noticed the mellow, well-polished glow of a floor that has been Johnson waxed for a number of years? You can have this much-admired luster on your floors and on your furniture and woodwork, too, if you protect them regularly with genuine Johnson's wax. Hello? Hello? Haven't they answered yet, McGee? No, I guess it takes a little while. Oh, hello, is that Wee Hawkin? Oh, is that you, Mert? What's that? Oh, you can't connect me with him because what? Oh. Oh, that's too bad. Well, thanks, Mert. Goodbye. What's the trouble, McGee? The Egyptian Lucky Ring Company has just burned to the ground. Oh. Good night. Good night, dog. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night at this same time. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. 